So you open Google Analytics 4 reports, but you notice that some data is missing. Maybe you don't see the visitors from a particular marketing campaign, or maybe the number of purchases is much lower than you would see in your accounting system, or maybe something else. In this video, I will share nine reasons why your data is missing in Google Analytics 4. And for most of those reasons, I will share tips and possible solutions. The first reason why you might be missing some of the data in your Google Analytics 4 reports is caused by this exclamation mark right here. So if you are browsing standard reports and you notice this, you can click it and you will see that thresholding is applied. Long story short, if you are using Google signals in your Google Analytics 4 property in order to prevent some potential leaks of personal information, Google Analytics 4 will not show rows in your reports with very small numbers. For example, here I have a traffic acquisition report where I have 35 unique combinations of session source and medium. But let's say that I'm running some small campaigns and I definitely know that those campaigns got at least several clicks. Unfortunately, if you see this exclamation mark right here, you won't see those rows and those traffic sources with small numbers in your reports. And this applies not only to traffic acquisition reports, it might apply to other reports such as engagement. So if you want to prevent that in the future, at least right now, you should not use Google signals in your property. And I mean, you should not enable them. Google signals are available in the admin panel of Google Analytics. And then you can find that in data settings and data collection. So if you don't have that enabled, then that's good. You will probably not see that orange exclamation mark warning. However, if you have enabled that at some point in the past, then just disabling Google signals will not be enough. So if you want to see rows with very small numbers as well in your reports, you should go to admin and then reporting identity. Here you should click show all and then switch to device based, at least for now when you want to see the data in your reports. This setting is retroactive, so you can switch between these identity types anytime you want. So once you switch to the device base, you can click save, you can reload the page, and then go back to your standard reports. Now you will notice that the total number of rows in your report has increased. For example, in my case, instead of 35, right now I see more than 600. So this includes traffic sources where maybe I got just one or two users, but all those rows with very small numbers will also be displayed in the report. Another reason is related to blocking of various tracking tools, including Google Analytics. There are various browser extensions such as Adblock Plus, Ghostery. There are also some browsers that emphasize the user privacy and proactively block various tools. And I mean, tracking tools such as Brave Browser, and since the popularity of these extensions and browsers continues to grow, naturally more and more data is not tracked by your analytics or your marketing tools. Of course, you could use solutions such as server-side tagging that could help you reduce the impact of these tracking preventions, but there is still some percentage of website visitors that you will not be able to track. And what you configure in server-side tagging is still not bulletproof. And in the future, these kind of tools and browsers might still block your tracking, even if you're using server-side tagging of Google Tag Manager. Another reason why you're missing data might be the result of a rookie mistake. If you're using Google Tag Manager to install Google Analytics 4 and you made some changes in the container, you can go to overview and see if those changes are visible right here. If yes, then it means that these changes are not published, meaning that these tags, triggers, and variables, they are not activated for your website visitors. Therefore, your tags are not collecting data and you don't see that in Google Analytics. If that is the case, then test these changes and click Submit button to publish everything to your website visitors so that you would start collecting data. I know this tip sounds like an obvious one, but sometimes even the best of us make this mistake. The next reason has a very low chance of happening to you, but technically it's still possible. So some visitors might have disabled JavaScript in their browser. And when JavaScript is disabled, it means that no cookies will work, your tracking codes will not work, but honestly, most of the websites will also not work for them. Anyway, it is still technically possible that some visitors have disabled JavaScript in their browser. Although looking at the statistics, the number of users worldwide who have disabled JavaScript is very low, and that is much lower than half of a percent of the total web traffic. 
the numbers that I saw were like from 2018, I think. So now it would probably be lower than 0.1% or maybe even less. The next reason is related to the privacy preferences of your visitor. If you have on your website a cookie consent pop-up asking for consent to be tracked, and if this consent is properly connected to your Google Tag Manager, Google Analytics, then some people will click deny because they don't want to be tracked. If that happens, and again, you have properly configured your analytics setup, those visitors will not be tracked. Therefore, if they make a purchase or maybe they submit a form or maybe they do something else, that data will not be collected and you won't have that data in your reports. Some businesses have lost about 30% of data after implementing this kind of cookie consent pop-up. Some of them have lost even more, like 50, maybe 60%. So the outcome in different situations is different, but this is definitely something that can cause partial loss of data in your analytics. Another reason is very broad and it's difficult to fit in everything into a single video, but the main tip is that maybe something in your Google Tag Manager setup is incorrect. Maybe triggers are not working properly. Maybe you're firing your tag when particular data is not available yet in the data layer, maybe something else. There are thousands of things that could go wrong. And in this case, what I would just suggest is that you thoroughly check the preview and debug mode of Google Tag Manager. For example, here, Let's say that I have a tag in my container, which is related to e-commerce, and it should send some important data. Obviously, right now, this is just some dummy parameter name, but let's say that this is very important parameter, and it should send something from the data layer. And even event name is taken from the data layer. And if I go here, I see that the tag fired successfully, and I would say, hey, hooray, this is working. But here's the thing with Google Tag Manager Preview Mode. Even if the tag has fired, it does not necessarily mean mean that the data was properly sent because maybe the tag was fired, but the important data was never sent. For example, here I can click on the tag which is marked as succeeded. And what I see here is that the event name is null because at that point, the variable, which is event name, which is data layer variable, at that point, it has no value. Its value is undefined. And then if I go to the tag and see the value of the important data, I can switch to values and I see that no value was sent because that parameter is also undefined. And then what I could do is I could check the data layer to see what was sent because maybe something is missing there. And in fact, in this data layer push, there is no important data or no parameter, which is called event underscore name. So the tag is firing, but it is not sending any data. That's why you would be missing that in your reports. And again, these are just several examples out of thousands of other things. So if you want to learn how to properly debug your setups, how to configure them, so then take a look at my Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics courses. I will post a link to them below the video because learning those things would take you hours and I could just not fit them in this YouTube video. But if there is one key takeaway from here, it's that you need to thoroughly test with preview and debug mode. Even if the tag has fired, you can click it. You should check not just names, but also values that were sent. And here we have a bunch of missing stuff. Also, if the tag is not firing, you should check the firing triggers section. For example, here, if I go to window loaded and let's say that I expected this tag to fire, I click it and I see that it did not fire and it didn't fire because of this particular condition. So things like these help you identify a potential problem that you should solve. Let's say that you have a situation where you want to track a form like this, where the visitor can enter the data, then click the button and then the visitor is redirected to another page. So even though Google Analytics is coded in a way to prevent this kind of problem, there is still a chance that it will happen. And what do I mean by that is that if you fire a tag right before the redirect, for example, on that button click, there is a chance that a tag will not have enough time to send the data to Google Analytics. Even though, as I said, Google Analytics 4 is superior compared to Google Analytics 3, 
because it uses some additional browser mechanisms to send the data even right before the redirect. But it's not perfect. It's not 100% accurate and there's still a chance of losing data. So in this case, you should either try to find a way to fire a tag after the redirect. For example, in this case, I could just fire the tag on a thank you page of a successful form submission, or maybe you could cooperate with a developer to get an additional maybe you know, one, two seconds timeout before the redirect so that your tags would have more time and chance to send the data properly. Google Analytics requires more time to process data and to show it in reports compared to the previous versions. Usually it will take up to 24 or maybe even 48 hours to display some data that you have collected. So for example, if you open a report of Google Analytics, the homepage, of your reports and then you see a sudden drop in yesterday's data, don't panic because there's a very high chance that yesterday's data still did not have enough time to be processed. And when you look at your data tomorrow, you will see that two days ago, the data was fine and it was processed properly. The same will apply to things like reports, standard reports, custom reports. So if you send some data to Google Analytics, be patient and you should check your data usually after two days in the reports. If only one day has passed after you sent the data, then wait for one more day. If after that you're missing data, then it means that the problem is somewhere else. If you have configured e-commerce tracking in Google Analytics 4, there is very one important parameter that is often overlooked. I'm not talking about transaction ID or value because those are definitely necessary, but also some people miss another important parameter, which is currency. So if you have a Google Analytics 4 tag that sends the purchase event and you have enabled the e-commerce setting to send the data from the data layer, then make sure that your developer pushes the currency parameter like this into the data layer as well. So it should be under e-commerce, then currency, and then the code of the currency. It might be euros, it might be US dollars, following this exact ISO standard. Now, if you're not using this checkbox, but instead you're manually sending parameters such as this one, like value, then transaction ID, and then you insert some variables here. Also make sure to include the currency parameter and then create a variable that returns the value of the currency. Or maybe your website operates in one currency, then you can just insert the currency code like this. But this is very important to include the currency because otherwise you will be missing some data in your monetization reports of Google Analytics 4. And these were the most popular reasons why some data is missing in your Google Analytics 4 reports. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics, then consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.